Hey, welcome to the new episode of Building the Open Web. Today we have a super exciting guest. We have Ricky from Paras today. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Shasha. Thanks for having me. Very excited to be here. Very excited to share what, what we've been doing in Paras with, with all of you. Cool. And you're, you're in Indonesia right now, right? Yeah, exactly. So it is like 8 a.m. here in Indonesia. So how did you get into programming? When, when was it? So actually, um, because... Uh, I was into into computer since you know since since, since my uh, since I was a child. Like I'm playing a lot of games, well, uh, well, like Warcraft, Age of Empires, a lot of things. And after that, doing some programming when I was um, I was in, in in middle school, like doing RPG Maker stuff, you know, doing this game programming and also, and so on. So I think that's really the start of me getting into more programming. And after that, I go into this. Uh, I'm majoring in in computer science in my college. So yeah, it just all about computers since my since, since I was a child. Mm-hmm. And is programming pretty prevalent in Indonesia, or you are like one of few people who are involved? Um, I think um, currently, like 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 in the past five years, Indonesia there are a lot of these these big companies like e-commerce company like uh, like fintech is really a thing in in Indonesia right now. So yeah, right now in the like in the past fifth in the five in the past five years, uh, Indonesia got really. Huge in, in in technology and yeah, uh, we need a lot of programmers. We need a lot of a uh, lot of digital talents, and yeah, I think currently there's not a lot of digital talents in Indonesia. So you know, like talent wars is really a thing in here. So you know, some programmers moving from one company to co- to another company, and yeah, it's it is really like it's it 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 it, it, it is growing. I'll say, but. If we are talking about the crypto space, especially in you know in the blockchain development, I think just it's a it's very small, very small developers that that I know uh, really coding about this Ethereum stuff, about this you know smart contracts and 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 you know generally crypto uh, development. Mm-hmm. And how did you get into crypto? When was it? What got you excited? I think it was about three years ago, three years ago um, when I was in college, like four years ago, I think, for right now, four years ago when I was in college, uh, you know, I just um, looking at the at the cryptocurrency, uh, at the crypto stuff, like mostly like at the time about, about trading crypto. So yeah, you just need to make some, to make some, 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 some money think, thinking about what, what, what other, what other, uh, what other channels that I can, you know, that I can get more money for, for, you know. And at the time, crypto is really it's really big. Twenty seventeen, I think twenty seventeen. So you know, ICO boom, uh, market keep, keep really uh, is really growing, increasing rapidly. So that's really the first time, uh, like that's really the first time I, I really uh, got into the crypto. But when I was in like 2014, 2015, I bought this this book about Bitcoin. But you know, when I was in, in still 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 in high school high school, I don't have money to really invest in in Bitcoin. But yeah, twenty seventeen is really um, it's really the the it's really the, the first thing that I that I'm really into the crypto, and since then you know I just you know I just keep keep doing crypto stuff from trading into um into, you know developing at the, at, at this time. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, you initially started working on a block stack ecosystem, right? Ah, yeah, exactly. So it it is. Um, around 2019, late 2019, I was, um, I was, you know, I was building. I was, I was trying to get into this, uh, this crypto blockchain space uh, development because I think um, because I, I read a lot of these documentations and at that time, like 20 late 2019, a lot of you know a lot of protocols, a lot of, a lot of uh, blockchains out there are really uh, having this good developer experience. I would say, and Blockstack is is one of them. So, so I was. You know, I was just curious about the blo- how to develop in blockchain, how to develop in the crypto space. So yeah, Blockstack is is the first, the the, the, the real first uh, time I'm I'm I, I got into this 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 crypto and blockchain development. And I think it it is uh, at that time they also have this this thing called app mining. So I joined in. I create app, so I, I I create some some applications and I I, I submit it to this uh, app mining. Got it. And how did you decide to join Near Ecosystem? When was it? What was the main reason? So yeah, um, so I, I think I can just you know yeah just touch 
the, 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 the origin story of Varas. So for us, it's, it's actually built on top of Blockstack at the time. So December 2019, we built this personal website generator, um, pretty much like a bot.me, but it is decentralized. So, you know, um, you, you just create a, a simple, a single, a single page uh, website for you and your profile, and you just put it, and we just upload it to the decentralized storage on the Blockstack. And it was December 2019, and... Yeah, time goes like two months, three months. Um, me and Afik at the time, it's it's just two of us. Uh, me and Afik uh, was talking about on what we can do better, what what we can do uh, right now with, with with this personal website generator. And at the time, we are thinking about this uh, this big thing, this big thing, the decentralized social media, because um, you know um, we have this idea of. Of this, the, the current social media is you know is selling your your privacy is is not only selling the pro, selling your privacy from the you know from the company perspective but also from the user perspective it is it is much more like 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 vanity metrics like people are looking for likes instead of connecting to each other so that, that's the that's the main idea for us at the time we are trying to build a new decentralized social media so pivoting from personal web generator into this decentralized social media. And yeah, at that time, Blockstack doesn't have. Uh, at that time, Blockstack doesn't have this this smart contract feature. So it is just decentralized storage at the time. So um, I think that's really one of the reason that we are looking for another platform, that another blockchain that really offer this this smart contract feature that we can uh, build on. And also, when we try the, this blockchain Blockstack V1 version, that V1 version, it is it's pretty old, like. It is it is small, yeah, not not small. I mean, that it is very, um, it is like 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 Bitcoin and it's very, uh, it's very. I would say very. The transaction spin is is very slow, uh, ten minutes maybe for for a transaction to be settled, and I don't think we can do we can do more if we want to build the central social media with the block tech P1 version, and so yeah, just scrolling around my Twitter timeline. Um, and look, uh, and someone I don't know, someone retweeted it or someone likes it. So I just got into this near protocol Twitter, got into it, and you know, look at their. At the time, I think it was uh, March. I think yeah, I think it was March. And also, that that was also the first time I I met this guy. I think um, talking about the, our idea on 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 what we want to build on on top of near. So I think it, it it's around March, and you know, um, I talked to their team. Um, Looking at, at at the documentation, it's very good. It's very scalable from my. Uh, so yeah, that that's really uh, why we, we we move from from the block stack and the first time we really got into near. Mm -hmm. And what's I'm I'm personally like really impressed about your story is not only you. Well, I actually didn't know about the first the first pivot that you actually um, were building the personal website generation and then moved into social media. When I met you, you already doing social media, but then. In my experience, also in the time of knowing you, you pivoted yet again, um, and and now you're building NFT marketplace, um, which is like re really really cool because uh, I think um, I think pivots pivots uh, is a kind of like natural natural state in startups early, early days because you're trying to figure out what works, um, and I think it's very unnatural for people to pivot because pivot means like you're changing the plan, and so it's like very. Um, abnormal for people to do this but you actually did it twice uh, so I, I find this like re very impressive that you've done it and not only that it also was one of the first applications that actually launched live on near um, as we launched into mainnet a couple months ago how, how was uh, how was uh, that decision about the pivot away from social network and become an nft marketplace how did you think about that decision uh -huh. yeah so um we're actually i think we are on we are we are one of the first um, application that launched on the mainnet because you know we've already developing this this fundamental stuff like our indexer, like we have this experience of building on on near since around around April, so I think that's really a good start for us. You know, so we can just uh, put it very fast the smart contract the indexer and just release it. So that's why uh, we're just at that time we just need around one month from from our pivot from the central social media to this NFT marketplace, we are, we are developing this NFT marketplace for, for I think, a month or so. So, yeah, because we have the, 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 this fundamental thing that we have already built for, 
for for our decentralized social media. So yeah, but pivot. Um, the the main reason because um, we, we we saw this. Well, you know, when we are launching on the testnet for our decentralized social media, we do we do this thing called uh, memory memory grants. Memory grants is is an event where uh, for a week or or two week we have this certain team that our users can can post on whether it is for example like like our first memory grants it is about it it, 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 it it was about your favorite book so you need to share what's your favorite book and so that's really the team for for this for this week and at the end of the week we will pick uh, our team will pick um, the best submission three best submission and and you know and send them like fifty dollars so that's really uh, the basic thing about about memory grants and we did like a couple of times and one of them is uh, is called art apprentice art apprentice is is, is memory grant that, that that artists that they focus on artists and let them share their creation and 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 i think that's that's really uh the main reason we we we, we wanted to focus on on the artists because we saw this good traction from the artist community and we also you know uh, found, found found this artist community on Twitter is really helping each other, supporting each other. For example, like uh, you might see something like retweet this to give visibility to artists. It it costs zero dollars to retweet this and you know and promote promote artists. So I think that's really a good good sign of 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 good community from 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 the from the artists on Twitter. And that's really uh, that's really it. We just we just, we just touched it a couple of times uh, for the member grants. From the music, from the you know, from the books readers, from the artists, and at the end of the day, we we know that this artist community is really one thing that we, that we need we need to focus on. So yeah, um, and at the time we, we are still thinking on building decentralized social media, but for artists, so so pretty much like like Deviant Art, I would say Deviant Art, Pixiv, or you know, any other decentralized social media that focus on the artists. But we all, at the time we also see this, we also saw this uh, this hype on the NFT marketplace, like the Rarible releasing their re- releasing their Rari token, uh, super rare, uh, known origin, and and any other NFT marketplace got really huge, um, I would say huge trading volume. So, so yeah, I think that's really the momentum for us, you know, um, to to be to, to to also in to I would say to also coming to this. Uh, to, to what's happening on the crypto space at the time. So NFT marketplace, I think that's really good idea. And so yeah, I think we need some key differentiation because there are a lot of a uh, lot of NFT NFT marketplace out there. So yeah, so we're 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 kind of brainstorming about about what we should do with this with this with this NFT marketplace. What our key differentiation and and at the end of the day, we will, we, we 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 are focused on these card collectible things, and that's really it. That's really why. For us is a card collectibles marketplace. Mm-hmm. That's really awesome. And w- what's the most important part of growing the usage now that you've launched? Is it is it more about the product, kind of changing things on the product side, like making purchase easier or building virality features? Or is it more like on adoption side, uh, kind of like finding new communities of creators and things like that? I think it's it depends on depends on depends on the stage. Because right now, I think we need um, we need more of the first thing. Like we want, to, uh, I would say, um, it, it is about about building products right now. But we also need to, you know, just um, in parallel, we need to to onboard some of the artists. But you know, I think right now in the, in in this early stage, we need to build features. We need to build the products and launching more and more and more features that you know that that, that can. Have this virality feature that can they can they can have this virality or, or you know some some social media aspect of it. So I think that's really the focus for the early stage, like us right now. But we also do not you know don't forget to 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 build the community as well. We got a lot of some we got a lot of feature requests and and stuff like that. So uh, I think that's really a good way for 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 building this this crypto crypto startups. It, it is both community. Uh, it's all about community, I think. Mm-hmm. And how do you manage your community? Is there some particular platform that you have community on, or how, how does it work for you? Oh uh, yes, yeah. so um, we we, all, we we currently only use Discord as our community channels. We don't use Telegrams, we don't, or we don't use any other uh, like like Slack or any other thing. Like so, so we just focus on the Discord because 
uh, we're still three three percent team, so we need a lot of things to do. Like if we manage a lot of these channels, it's gonna be messy. It's gonna be hard for us. So yeah, Discord is our is, is our main channel because uh, you know we saw this the, the, there are a lot of crypto crypto you know crypto companies crypto startups that are also on on the Discord and and I think it is really a good way. If I, for example, like like if we if we focus on Telegram, it just only has this one group and it doesn't have these multiple channels that people can talk to. Maybe like sharing their art and uh, this is the, the channel for sharing art. This is the channel for talking about feature requests and so on. So it's much uh, so using Discord is pretty much uh, pretty much more manageable and easier for us. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. It sounds like you're getting a lot of feedback directly from from artists. I see. How how do you think about so differentiation between you touched uh, briefly on differentiation, as you mentioned, there are like many other platforms out there. Um, in NFT space, seems like it's a space that will like really blow up this year, become very big. Uh, how how do you think about? Is it competition between other platforms, or is it everybody has their own niche? Mm-hmm. So um, so I think right now um, everyone want to be want to be the like I'll say the Christie of the of the of the of the crypto space, right? They want to be um, selling this premium art. They want to selling this uh, the digital premium art. So um, I think that's really what we have right now. I think that's that's really good because um, it is much easier to sell. I'll say uh, because we have a lot of wealth right now in in crypto space because it is the bull market right now, and I think that's really a good way to you know to to let them buy this NFT probably for for. For investment investment purpose or some any other thing like, uh, so yeah. So like like I mentioned earlier, uh, most marketplaces out there are focused on becoming the uh, becoming the premium digital art um, dealer, something like that. And I think that's a lot. There are a lot. There are already a lot of NFT marketplaces that focus on that and. And in the future, I think we need to we need, just like any just like you know just like any other startup in in web in web 2.0, we need some key differentiation. We need to focus on something. We need to focus on some niche. And then that's really uh, that's really a thing for for NFT marketplace in the in the cup in the next you know in the next couple of couple of months couple of years that we we don't really need much of this general uh, I would say general general NFT type of stuff. For example, in Ethereum they have this open sea, so why don't why why you need to build another open sea? We, we just use this one open sea and just you know just just split it to a lot more different niche and build on top of open sea. So something like that. And I think um, building niche is really a good way to onboard uh, mainstream users, not only these you know the, not, not only the guys from the crypto space. And and you know if we focus on some some niche, it is much easier to you know to approach them. To taught them, you know, to to to, to, to taught them about the crypto space, about the cryptocurrency, about the blockchain space, about the ownerships, about everything else, and and that's really it. That's really that's really why we focus on this niche, and that that is also why we we are encouraging any other founders, any other you know uh, developers out there that want to build. If, if if you want to go into this NFT marketplace, it it is already big. I would say it's already big right now, and it will keep growing, but one thing that you need to you know to survive, I think, is this this key differentiation. And to focus on niche is not a bad thing, I'll say, because you know, um, some uh, I got this question a lot, like why why you focus on the niche thing? Because a lot of this crypto company, a lot, a lot of this uh, blockchain and crypto startups are focused on building the protocols, right? The protocols where people will build on top of them. The question is that like. Uh, if everyone's want to be want to be the want to you know, want to be the fundamental who who's going to build you know who's going to build the app so i think that's that's really it. We, we already have this fundamental we already have this a lot of fundamental stuff a lot of you know protocols so just build on top of it and just find your niche mm-hmm. yep and how do you find so far uh, your niche working do you find it easy to uh, to explain to artists like what you're building and why it's valuable for them also another question i have is about ease of onboarding is it easy for them to get started with crypto or do you find some there are some challenges there so yeah about the onboarding process uh, no no i think let's talk about more. let's talk uh, about this that yeah, yeah, from the artist, artist perspective first so yeah for you know for, for 
we're actually currently doing like 70 percent crypto artists and 30 percent non-crypto artists like like they don't they don't have this 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 crypto background they just got into bank they just got into crypto because uh, because of virus so yeah um because you know it for us it's it, it is very easy to to just onboard those crypto artists we don't need to talk them you know they, we don't need yeah we don't need to explain all this fundamental stuff cheat phrase you know gas fee and stuff so it's very easy to just to onboard to onboard these artists that are already into the crypto but for this like 20 percent 30 percent artists that are not not from the crypto space um at first it is very hard not not very hard like it's quite some some of them are very hard to you know to convert to into to onboard them to into this 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 this, this platform to paras or you know generally to the crypto space because they they heard this you know crypto space is cryptocurrency is bot scam is fat you know um like like like, like they, they heard it from the news right because maybe like from ICO bubble 2017 2018 they got you know they got a lot of bad news from from the crypto so I think that's really um yeah there are these these guys that that heard this crypto and it's they thought they, this bad thing and they don't want to be involved in this crypto thing so I think that's fine I think that's why and if if they already have this in mind we don't really you know we don't really have the i will say the, the resources the time to to you know to tell them why this is the future like like it is i would say it is a waste of time for us because we just need we just need to you know to find any other artists that don't have this this the this mindset right so yeah like um well we're currently looking a lot of uh not not non crypto artists from 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 sites like Artstation, Deviant Arts. Um, so I think these artists, um, some of them are like like mentioned earlier, uh, have have heard about crypto and it's betting, and some of them are they they haven't about this crypto stuff. They they just know that oh the, the, there is this coin stuff and I can sell it and someone you know I, I can sell it for some 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 you know some some my local currency and and that's where that's how I get money. So these artists are. Are, I'll say it is very easy to onboard them. You just need to tell them, just you know, just create some wallet, do this process, this uh, do these steps, and and we'll fund you. We'll send you some some near to get you started. You we have this you know this transaction fee. And it's very easy. You know, for one year you can just mean thousand cards right now. So I think that's really it's very easy for for us to onboard these artists. Thanks to thanks to us, you know, building on top of near. It's very cheap. It's very fast. So they don't really, you know, it's just the same thing like like they upload it on Instagram, right? So they just put some picture, they just put some description, some yeah, some some names and stuff. So just just upload it. It just took a couple of seconds to just to just mention your card and and they are already you know they don't have this 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 much barrier. The only barrier right now is to just you know to just onboard them because they need to get some near somehow. But for the artists, we provide them some near like juniors for for every artist that be on board, and these juniors can really you know can really last very long like maybe like thou like thousand to thousand means it's it's very it's gonna take a long time to you know because it's super cheap basically yeah super cheap <laughs> nice that's that's awesome that's really great to hear actually um how, how do you think now about this second question I had about onboarding uh like uh, do you think like there is some quick wins you can do like such as like uh, maybe improving the on ramps experiences or like some other things that can be like really big wins yeah i think it's very because it is very easy to onboard artists and i think we can just onboard as many artists as possible from the from the non crypto space because for example if we build on on ethereum they need to install this metamask and they for for every mint they need to call they, they need to have some ethereum like Five dollars right now. I don't know how how much it gets right now, but I think it's very it's very high. Like maybe they need five dollars to to publish their words, and that no nobody guarantee that that it will sold at least five dollars, right? So so if we compare to using Near Protocol compared to using Paras, um, they, they they just need like zero point zero zero x uh, dollars to mint, and and they can just sell it for one dollar, two dollars, three dollars. And because the, the price is really it's really cheap, many collectors can start buying NFTs. So like so that that's also one of the differentiation I think that that I saw um, on Paras on Near Protocol than any other uh, any other blockchain. I'll say mostly Ethereum and its marketplace because we 
artists can sell very, very very in very low price like one dollars two dollars three dollars and and you know put it in huge quantity like 50 pieces 100 pieces they can just sell in quantities instead instead of an edition of one like super rare edition of one of one they need it 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 needs to be sold around thousand dollars two thousand dollars so artists can get uh, that can get can get this 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 profit kind of thing so um so on paras they can they can sell very low very cheap but and focus on you know getting more collectors to buy their their cards and that's really uh that's really what we see right now because we can onboard artists easily and also collector easily because you know they can just make some some small purchase one dollars two dollars and get the experience of owning something owning owning this this card collectibles and what kind of variety f- features you think are uh, good ones to implement because I, I know you have like for example like gifting of nfts is a good example what are some of the other like variety features you're thinking about mm. and i think that that that, that 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 is also a good way um uh, a good use case of why why building on 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 blockchains like near really you know really helps you a lot because uh, if you are doing giveaway on Ethereum, you need to pay some. You need to pay a lot of money. Like for example, like for minting, you need some some amount of Ethereum. And if you transfer it to something like like the, if you are doing airdrop giveaways, you, you need a lot of lot of you know there are a lot of gas fee, right? And if we compare it to to to, to, to near protocol, you know transferring to someone is just cost zero point zero zero dollars, like zero point zero zero three right now. I think I'm not really sure, but I think. That's re- that's really the key thing for for, for, for artists to, to get started on, on on the crypto industry. For example, they can just do this this giveaways, this airdrop for for some you know for, on Twitter. For example, like you need some retweet, some followers. You just you know you just put it. I'm giving away five NFTs, ten F- ten NFT, hundred NFTs. It doesn't matter. Like like the, the like, because the, the the gas fee is very cheap. They can do this a lot of a lot of transactions easily. They can just send it to a lot of people and that's where the virality can be a thing in, in, in when when you, when we when we are using near protocol and like I, like you mentioned earlier about the gift feature we are we're kind of working on it right now uh, because um right now we have, we have this transfer feature but it doesn't have this like like visual a good visual for for gifting and we wanted to work on that so so like like uh, I, I want to make like give giving some nfts to someone become uh, become like 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 the real life, like the real world giving giving present to your friends. So I think that's that's a good way for for virality marketing for for paras to you know to grow their 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 collectors and also maybe some artists to grow. But but especially the collectors, you know you know to just onboard those mainstream users, those that those that haven't been in the crypto space, and you know get them into this NFT space right away. And because um, we have this, you know, we ha- we already have this 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 this, vi- this virtual goods like on on gaming perspective uh, on gaming side on the gaming ecosystem. We have this virtual goods, some weapons, some some skins that are really bought using real real money, and that's really a good good way for them to to you know to compare to. So oh, so this is something like something like gaming stuff. So I ju- I can just buy this. Uh, well, by this by this card collectibles collect this card collectibles and I can sell it later on so for example if this goes viral if this card goes uh, goes huge I can sell it later for some profit for example if they have this this mindset or um, we have we also have these collectors that really just love collecting stuff and because it's very cheap they can just you know they, they just lot of, they just bought a lot of stuff and yeah that's really that's really um, the virality is really uh, it's really a thing in in uh, if 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 you if you if you guys can build on on a very cheap platform like like Net Protocol. Mm-hmm. And so, what was the most challenging part of building the business so far? I would say building on top of blockchain is is is, is hard compared to compared to uh, the traditional Web two point startup, right? Because we we are we are having this smart contract uh, thing, so. And you know, in the in the smart contract, we need you know we need to to make sure that the there are no severe bugs, there are no, no there are no there are no there are no ways for 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 the hackers to really you know to really get some funds from the from the from the other users to, to really you know to really exploit the, the smart contract. So we need to to be careful with the smart contracts, and you know security security and safety of the smart contracts took 
quite some time. So I think that's really like, for example, if, if you're a startup, you need to, to move fast and like, like Facebook mentioned, move fast and break things, right? So as, as an early stage startup, you need to move very fast and do a lot of things and try experiment a lot of things. And at the same time, you also need to, you know, you also need to have this, this secure smart contract. So it's pretty much like you need to move fast, but you also need to, to be to be like to to be safe and you know keep it keep keep your keep your smart contract very very secure. And that's really that's really what 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 I've been experiencing. Like if we are doing this on on Web 2.0 uh, traditional Web 2.0, we can just update our own database. You know, do we do this? You know, do these fixes and it's very easy. It's very easy if we are building Web 2.0 to to to, to implement these features. And if if we if we have some bugs, we can just we, we, we own the database so we can just change the, the data itself so it's very easy if we just use the if we just uh, build on top of traditional web 2.0 but that's really uh, the challenging thing for us if uh, if you guys are uh, you know I want to build these crypto startups you know like matching the speed of of the of the of the early stage startup and also your your security of the of the applications mm-hmm. and also that that actually gets to another interesting question how did you think about a uh, choice of language that you're going to build with because because in your there is rust kind of like more kind of secure robust whatnot at least how we think about internally and then there is uh typescript assembly script that allows you probably to move faster I'm, I'm not sure if it's do you see any difference in security there but but it definitely probably allows you to move faster right your choice uh-huh. yeah so so that's also why we choose assembly script for our for our smart contract language right now so um, because assembly script, because um, we, we already used to this JavaScripting. JavaScript is one of the most uh, used language out there in the uh, out there in the world. So yeah, it's very easy to onboard if 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 you know if some JavaScript developer, just some some web developers out there want to try, you know, want to try to build on on top of blockchain, they can just use this, this assembly script that 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 offered by by the by the net by the near blockchain, right? And because it is very easy to to use assembly script. And it is also very, you know, uh, very easy to prototype, very easy to uh, to to do because uh, because most people are already used to this to this to this language, right? And as for the security part, like uh, I'll say, there are there's small concern that because because there's, because there's not not a lot of developers that are really building this assembly scripting. Um, if you compare it to Rust, Rust is, Rust have a huge huge contributors and and it's already been there, and it's backed by Mozilla, right? So, I think that's why Rust having is is all, is, ha- is having this uh, this I'll say this this security feature that that are really that are really what what some developers that are looking for when 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 they are trying Rust. But because because this 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 security feature, they need to to also you know um, to also uh, I would say make it. Make it make it a lot harder for developers to build on top of Rust because they need to you know to to, to think about about a lot of things. So um, I think as as for the security, it doesn't have a lot of difference because at the end of the day, both of them are compiled to this uh, to this web assembly thing and uploaded to the to the smart contract to the you know to the to the near near blockchain. And if so, so, so I think it it is. It is a good way. It's very good for for near protocol to yeah, to to offer two language for for developer to choose to, and either Rust or Assembly Script. I think I think both of them are great. Um, like I mentioned earlier, it's, it is true. Like um, if you want to go fast, you can just try Assembly Script. But you know, if you wanna if you wanna create something like DeFi, like very financial thing, like I think it's better to just use Rust. But for NFT marketplace, I think it's okay for 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 us to use assembly script. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's right. And and to your point, like there is WebAssembly that either of those languages compile down to, so there's security there. And and also, I think the differences between two languages kind of at least in near internally reminds me of almost like differences between two different mindsets of two different engineers. One is more academic, prefer like Rust, and one is like hacker, um, and they. And they prefer assembly script and super interesting. Yep. Uh, so what what's the what's the most rewarding part of of growing for us? Like, w- w- what is the most exciting thing? Yeah. So I think like um, uh, building startups is is 
it's hard and fun at the same time so um we have this like for example like 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 we because we are building the startups we we can connect with a lot of a lot of people like from artists from collectors from from investor investor from some mentors from from a lot of people out there in in the world especially when when you're when you're building crypto you will you know you you will naturally go global not not you know not or not in some region so so you, you will naturally go global and you meet a lot of people because your focus is on the crypto space not not in some region like for example like we want we only want focus in indonesia we cannot do that like if we if you want to build on on crypto you need to go global and you need to you know you need to focus on the communities like the global like the global communities like um like that so um i think that's really rewarding connecting with a lot of people uh, meeting a lot of people from different cultures different backgrounds that's really a great thing for us to to know uh, because we live in indonesia we are really far far away from you know from the technology from the central of the you know, from europe or even uh, or us where or china where the technology is really a thing right so um that's really a good way for us you know just to keep Get few few steps ahead in, in uh, for us if we compare to to other uh, to other startups in Indonesia. So that's really good thing for us. And the other thing is, um, uh, I would say, um, you know, that, like the joy of building products and people people are using it. I think that's really that's also a really a really a really rewarding thing for us because uh, you know since since I was college, I built a lot of stuff. Uh, I did some, you know, some some some, some small startup with my, with my friends, and we we just don't get a lot of users. Like um, people are not using it because I I don't maybe because it's just a bad idea. But but you know, um, when you have when, when you already build the product and and people are using it, and and especially when people are are getting money, for example, like NFT marketplace artists are getting money, you get some sense of some 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 sense of I say joy of of building the products. And that's really, that's really it. That's really it. And we wanted to build more and more and onboard more people, more artists, more collectors, and you know, generate more revenue for people, for other people as well. And I think that's really the most rewarding thing for us to to, to build startups. Yeah, and I think like what's interesting about art specifically is that internet uh, did not change much of uh, like there was not that many new new people who are getting like there is Divian Art to your point. There are a couple of marketplaces, but majority of the art art sales is still kind of happening in a like galleries and like offline world it's kind of interesting because like music music fully uh internet based or, and movies um but but art is actually where like there's so much opportunity i think to get artists to get paid now with crypto in a way uh in a way where like internet actually did not deliver a, a, as much in in a big way i think right now like mil- millions of artists can can benefit um i think that's super um super interesting um, yeah, and you, what I'm also like super excited about, you're growing also really fast, like weekly. What we are, what we are seeing for us is like you're growing like twenty percent week to week right now, which is kind of crazy. It's it's on a small number, but but still, it's like very like very very exciting, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we are also um, actually we, we don't really expect a lot of you know a lot of tra- a lot of tractions right right away. Like after we launch, we don't expect a lot of you know. A lot of this stuff happening because you know we are on different blockchain everyone is on ethereum like we're not really sure on on on, on you know on what traction we, we got when we launched but you know as of today um, um running this the this palace around two plus months or so um i think like the you know the, the, the like the gas fee on ethereum the, the problems on ethereum is really it's really a thing like the gas fee is really a thing and most of artists out there that are first uh, minting on Ethereum, they are stopping minting because of the gas price, right? And and that's 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 what the artists need right now. They need a minting platform where you know where they can mint for 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 very cheap uh, for a cheap for gas price, and they can just you know upload their their works and and try to make some some money. And and that's that's what we uh, that's what we we really uh, we think that. That really help us also onboarding those onboarding these crypto artists from from other blockchains, especially Ethereum, and and yeah, that 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 that's it, I think. Mm-hmm. And what I also saw, what was interesting to me in the data, is that what I noticed is that there are some artists who um, 
who sold some of their art who then start buying somebody else's art so you can see kind of like this like capital flow and like some people started to earn and then they spend it on other art as well so that that's really interesting as well yeah exactly yeah exactly that that's why i uh that's why i think like artist community is really it's really great they have this uh, they support each other you know they just help each other support each other uh, give visibility to others and and that's what really a good uh, good thing that i that i got when you know when i got into this artist community they they, they really support each other and 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 you know just so so so, so for, for 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 other entrepreneur for other you know other founders out there other entrepreneurs like like, like finding this, this 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 niche is is very good like uh, if if you also can find any other niche um, that have this 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 good community support like they support each other they help each other I think that's a really good way for you to to go to like to to focus on. And in terms of where you find those communities, uh, did you find some particular channel that works really well? Be it like Reddit or Twitter or DeviantArt. Um, is there any any single one that works really well, or you kind of do many different ones? Mm-hmm. Um, at first, we do a lot of yeah, we we do a lot of stuff like we, we put it on Reddit, we put it on. Uh, on any other social media out there, on, on a lot of different channels, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, but at the end of the day, we 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 just wanted to focus on on a few channels. For right now, we are we are focused on our station because um, I think our station got this uh, have this have this uh, have this good good search feature where you can just search from countries, search from followers count, search from like a lot of things. You can do a lot a lot of search and you can just message the artist and then that's uh that's really that's really a good way for us to to onboard artists and we and we, we can just say oh the artist from from this country is interested in nft and you know they have this good you know good 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 positive mind about crypto and we can just focus on this country right and in, in another country they just you know they just don't get it what crypto i don't i don't understand and we just we just don't want to be involved in the, in, in the crypto stuff and yeah so that's why we 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 are we are, we are, we are focused on on our station right now and also twitter is really the best thing for for every crypto startup out there to you know to really find find some users whether it is you know whether it's nft marketplace or it's dividing twitter is is everything like like you need to onboard the crypto users uh, from from twitter and yeah i think that's what works the best for us for for for, for the crypto ecosystem Twitter is really the way the way to go. I don't think any other channel is a good way. Of, yeah, maybe like Telegram groups, but if you can find this Telegram group, good good Telegram group that, that have this active member, it is very good way to to onboard them to to your platform, to your uh, to your dApps. And other thing like like for artist specific, we are right now focused on this art station. Thank you. And maybe last question I have is where do you want people to take a look at? Is it um, like for, for listeners who want to learn more about Paras, should they go to your blog or website or Twitter or uh, maybe like leave some URL? So um, you can just visit paras.id. It is P-A-R-A-S dot I-D. Um, you can just visit our website and you can just, you know, just take a look at, at the marketplace at the at the activity I, I think activity is, is one of the good uh, one of the one of the most most you know uh, most visited page because a lot of people want to see some activities on on the marketplace right they want to see um, how many means it how many are sold today so yeah um, very good way for you to to get you know to get a strong uh, to get an, an overall overview of, of how our marketplace really really is all about at that time so the activity page is a, a good way for you to to really know what's happening on on para, Paras marketplace, but you know, in the next couple of the next couple of weeks, at the end of this month, we're gonna release this this publication feature. So you know, and currently we are doing uh, we are doing our blogs on on our medium. It is Paras Media. You can just search it on on on, on the medium Paras Media, and we also only have one social media. It is on Twitter. We are focused on Twitter. So yeah, please follow us and you know just to give to to to, to give. A lot of more announcement we have uh we're uh, we're trying to create some events some competition out there in the in the in the, in the next few months so yeah be, be 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 sure to to follow us to get you know to get to get more of this uh get more of this news and so back to this publication feature so uh at the end of this at the end of this month we're gonna move from medium to our own like to our own blogs and also the community guest post so yeah um you can just 
uh, you can just read most of our stuff in our in our website in the next in the next couple of weeks. So I think that's that's really it. Please be sure to follow our Twitter to get more to get more news and yeah, please if you, you know, if you if you love collecting, you can just start collecting from Paris. It's some some of the arts are costing around five dollars maybe. You know, I think it's a good way for you to to start collecting these these, these digital collectibles. Well, thank you for joining today. It was super exciting to to learn more about your your your, your grow, growing story. Yep, I'm very happy to to share this this part of story with all of you. And um, yeah, for example, if if, if you are uh, if you're investors that are listening to this, um, we are actually looking for some potential investors that are interested to you know to invest in Paras. We are working on this deal structure, and you know, please reach out to us. Thanks a lot.